This tree has 12 vertices or nodes, including one root and seven leaves. A depth first search or traversal visits the root node and then recursively traverses each subtree in turn. APL's high order operators take function operands as well as array arguments. Primitive operators include reduction or fold, times reduction, each or map, reverse each, a vector of vectors, and commute or switch, one, two, Join switch 3, 4. When defining an operator, double alpha and double omega refer to its left and right operands, and single alpha and omega to its argument arrays. For example, this operator applies its left operand function twice to its right argument array. Enclose apply twice to a character vector. We will define a two operand operator for a depth first tree search. Using an informal type notation to declare our intent, depth first search will be an operator which takes an initial accumulator value as left argument and a tree as right argument and returns an accumulated value for the whole tree. With a left operand function which takes an accumulator value and a tree node and returns a successor value and a right operand function which takes an accumulator value and a tree node and returns a possibly null vector of subtrees. Coding our operator Left operand function double alpha visits node omega, returning a successor to the accumulator value. Enclosed to form a single array item, which is joined to the vector of subtrees returned by right operand function double omega. After visiting the node, the search is applied recursively. Del refers to the operator bound with its operand functions with an accumulating reduction between the value for the node and each of its subtrees. APL's primitive reduction operator folds from the right, so we must reverse its argument vector and switch the arguments of the recursive call. Finally, we disclose the resulting accumulator item. We don't need an explicit test for the base case of the recursion. If the vector of subtrees is empty, the reduction is applied to a single item, the value for a leaf node, which it just returns as result. The tree representation of this nested vector has seven nodes, a root, two branches, and four leaves. Let's search the tree. Given a tree omega, the right operand function must return a possibly null vector of subtrees. Boolean 0 equals the array depth of the node, the leaf case, drop of a vector of subtrees. It is the right operand function alone that projects a tree type onto the subject array. Currying the operator with its right operand derives a one operand operator which traverses a particular kind of tree, applying its left operand function. Experimenting with various accumulating functions, we can count the nodes of our tree, starting with an initial value of zero. Counting just the leaves, where zero equals the array depth of the node, or to enlist the leaves into a vector, Start with a null vector as accumulator and join taking only leaf items. 
In these examples, notice how a zero or null identity item is presented to the primitive accumulating functions plus and join for excluded cases. However, the enlisting of a nested array is such a common requirement that APL provides it as primitive. The tree can be either concrete as above or subtrees can be realized just in time by the right operand function. For example, when tree searching the solution to a problem such as Sudoku or a chess puzzle. The challenge is to place eight queens on a chessboard in such a way that no piece is attacking any other. Let's experiment. Given a vector of the column positions of queens placed a knight's move apart in the first three rows, in which columns could we place a queen in the fourth row? The queens attack these columns in the fourth row along right diagonals. Or in general, for any number of rows, the reverse of the indices of a shape omega vector. And these columns in a fourth row along left diagonals, the first column of which is off board. And finally, these columns with straight ahead moves. Combining these three directions, neg 1, 0, and 1, each times the item of their ranges and each offset by their current placement item. Enlisting this vector of vectors into a simple vector with these unique items. We could name this function attack. The column positions still available in the fourth row are all columns except for those under attack. So a vector of the possible four row placements is the current placement item, join each possibility. But this is exactly the function for the subtrees of a given placement we require for the right operand of DFS. Let's generalize our definition to square chessboards of any size, the n queens problem. Instead of 8, we'll arrange for the length of the first item in the accumulator to determine the board size. Again, the binding of DFS with this right operand defines a tree search specific to the n queens problem. Starting with a null placement vector, how many nodes are there in the full search tree for an 8 by 8 board? Using a single item length 8 accumulator of all zeros and displaying only the first of the mix. Compare this number with the tree size for all possible placements of 8 queens, 8 to the power 8. Solutions of the n queens problem are the leaves of the tree for n board rows, where the number of board rows equals the number in the first item of the accumulator. Here are the numbers of solutions for square boards of size each 0 through 10. To collect the solutions We accumulate
taking just n row items. Starting with an empty solution vector for a 4x4 four four chessboard. we see two solutions. These are more appealing if formatted as Boolean matrices. Vector outer product comparison with its indices. Format each solution. And so a function for n queens is this. The first few solutions for 5 queens and 8 queens. Let's pause for a moment to contemplate the code. before going to experiment at tryapl.org. Thank you.